I'm going to show you the easiest way to composite using Adobe After Effects and with the help of Generative Fill. As a VFX artist and video editor, one of my favorite capabilities of Adobe's Generative Fill is the ability to fill in based on existing lighting conditions. This creates more realism when compositing your shot. Even if you don't use what it generates, it could be a good guideline to help your composite in the long run if you just look at what it produces. Let's dive into it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Composition, Save Frame As, File. And then I'm gonna render that out. And then in Photoshop, I'm gonna click on Remove Background. And you can see it does a pretty good job at that right away. So what I'm trying to do is basically create and generate a background that mimics this lighting conditions that they're in right now. We're gonna click on our layer here, and then we're gonna click on Select Subject. And then I'm just gonna select inverse. And then I'm gonna click on generative fill. And I'm gonna type in my prompt. And after a few tries, here's the best one. There's some other ones here that don't work as well, but this one's the best. We got the background here that's kind of out of focus, creates a nice depth of field. And you got almost like a sunset look over here, which is creating this edge on her shoulder. So I like this one a lot. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide my bottom layer and I'm just going to select the dynamic duo here and I'm going to click on generative fill and I'm going to click on remove these people. Save this and jump back to After Effects. You could see here in the timeline that the background kind of stops right there. So to fix this, since this is still frame, I could go to time, freeze frame and just extend it from there. I'm gonna go to my effects and presets and I'm gonna bring the key light effect onto my video layer. And then in the key light panel and the effect controls, I'm gonna click on screen color, the eyedropper, and I'm gonna try to pick the darkest part of this screen. So I think right down here. So when I change my view to screen mat and I drop down the screen mat options, this is where I can make my fine tune adjustments. So if I go to clip black and I bring that up until all the surrounding white goes away, then I could bring my clip white up until it's a perfect silhouette of white on black. That's basically what you want. Change this back to final result. This is our result without any color correction or adjustments. Starting to look pretty good. I'm not crazy about their surrounding hair. So to fix that, I can make some adjustments here. I can make the screen softness about five pixels. Then I'm gonna change this to hard color. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on compositing this a little bit better. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a nice edge blur around them. So to do this, I'm gonna duplicate my background and bring it to the top. And I'm gonna duplicate my video layer and bring it to the top. I'm gonna take those two and pre-compose them together. Okay, so now I'm gonna pre-compose this again, my video layer, and I'm gonna bring it to a new composition. Then I'm gonna solo it. I'm gonna add the effect, Simple Choker. And if I go in close here, you'll see what it does. It basically just chokes the edge. So I'm gonna choke that. And then I'm gonna to go to the Invert Alpha effect in Image Utilities. And I'm gonna bring that on there. And you can see that it just inverts it and it basically takes the edge here. So now this is the edge of our subject layer, but what I want is I want this track matted with my background layer. So to do that, I'm gonna bring my background to the top here and I'm gonna pick whip my track mat to my subject layer. If I get rid of this, you could see this is my new background. So basically what this does is it creates almost like a an edge blur halo effect around them that is mimicking like an edge light. I could go to Gaussian Blur and I could blur this quite a bit and then I could lower the opacity which kind of blends them into the background even more. And then from there, my blending mode, I could change to Add if I wanted to make it even brighter. It seems like her side should be brighter and her side shouldn't. So what I can do is I can actually create a mask here and I could feather it quite a bit. So her side basically gets the 
the light edge and her side doesn't. And if I want her side to get maybe of a darker shadow, if she's in the shadows, I could change her edge to darker color. So it kind of mimics like shadows and highlights a little bit and it just helps them blend into the scene a little bit more. Then what we could do is we could work on a color. So from here, I'm gonna go to Lumetri Color. I'm gonna go to Window, Lumetri Scopes. So if you're not familiar with the scopes, basically this is your, your highlights, these are your shadows, these are your midtones. And then this is your RGB parade, which is basically showing you how much of each color in the RGB is in the scene. You can see red is a lot because she's wearing a red dress. This is your vector scope, showing you where the colors tend to lean. So what we wanna do is we wanna kinda of look at these markers and try to make our subjects match these markers as best we can. So if we start with with our contrast, right? If we start with here, you could see our background is all the way up here in terms of highlights and shadows. So we need to fix our subjects so it matches this. So we could bring the exposure up a little bit. And we could bring the blacks up. And we could add mess around with the shadow a little bit. It looks like since they're away from the sun, they'll kind of be more in the shadows. Okay, so that looks pretty pretty even in terms of the background. There's a before and after. And then if you want to switch to color, what you could do is you could use the temperature. I tend to use the curves or the color wheels. So you, you could basically break down the highlights, midtones, and shadows. So if we want our highlights to be more of a golden, and again, looking over here, because you can see our scene is really more towards the yellow channel. So we can kind of move our midtones towards the yellowish green, keep it more golden if we can. I think that looks pretty good. And I think we just have to lower the vibrance a little bit so it matches the scene much better. All right, before we see the final result, a couple final finishing touches that I added were, I added the match grain effect to match the grain of my subject layer. I also composited some moving grass onto my background and to really sell it, I added a little camera shake to the final result. There you have it. Thanks for watching.